What is up, everybody out there in Heroclix land? This, once again, is Scott Porter back for day number three for our brand new unboxing series for Marvel Heroclix's brand new set, Deadpool and Wolverine. As you can see uh, behind me here, uh, this massive image of Deadpool trying to study the history of Wolverine, which is all very confusing. Uh, Deadpool's isn't so easy himself either, and we've been going down memory lane for both Wolverine and for Deadpool. Yesterday we got our first actual Wolverine. We still have not seen a Deadpool in a Deadpool set, which is blowing my mind, quite frankly. Um, if I'm looking at the outside of the box here, uh, what else do I think could be in this set, or what else do I hope that we pull today? Um, well, yesterday we pulled this Wolverine here. With the cowboy hat. I wouldn't mind pulling Weapon X or Patch. I've already, I'm on record. Patch is a ridiculous thing. Patch is on par with a superhero putting a pair of glasses and a suit on, and you're not knowing that he's the superhero anymore, except for he's putting an eye patch and a tuxedo on. And all of a sudden, he's Patch, the super suave, like, uh, gambling super spy, and Madripoor just cracks me up. I wouldn't mind pulling that. Uh, any other members, Banshee, on the outside of the box here, Banshee is another member of the X-Men that was dead for a very long time. He was killed by Vulcan, brought back. But back in the day, Banshee was so important to so many different storylines in the X-Men uh, world. He was one of the teachers of Generation X. Uh, he was around for a long time. Muir Island he was tied into with Moira McTaggart. And then he died and he was gone for a while, but now Banshee is back in full force. Uh, Banshee actually recently became the uh, the spirit of variance, uh, Vox Ignis. It's like this really cool, it's, he's not a ghost rider. He's like a ghost rider like thing, uh, the ghost of variance. It's in uh, Legion of X and it's so cool. Really, really cool read. I'd love to get a Banshee in this set. I'd love to pull him and be able to talk about Sean Cassidy. One of my all time favorite uh, early X-Men. Really, really cool. Uh, I want to pull that Warlord, Professor X here. I know I've mentioned the storyline a few times now, but uh, it's basically the War Scrolls take over all of the royalty in the Shi'ar Empire. And uh, out of nowhere, Lila Cheney shows up, teleports a ton of X-Men out into Shi'ar space, and they don't know why they're there. And Deathbird is trying to overthrow Empress Lylandra. She is doing it because she knows that that is not her sister. She knows that this warlord that is by her side is not actually Professor X, no. It's a war scroll. These guys are war scrolls and the X-Men show up, they've gotta figure it out. The Star Jammers are in it. That would be cool to be in this set. Um, you have, of course, the Imperial Guard of the Shi'ar Empire. I mean, go back and read those issues before the, the relaunch of X-Men. Like, do yourself a favor. It's such a fun read. It is so very cool, and it ties up all the loose ends of everything Claremont had going on. So really excited to see some of that. I don't know. Panda Pool, really cool. One of the best members of the Deadpool Corps when they're fighting against Dreadpool and trying to keep him from killing all of the Deadpools. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how they're going to do this mime Deadpool. If you don't know the story of mime Deadpool or dead uh, mime pool, mime pool. Uh, he was a member of the Avengers on his Earth, and he did something really dumb, got all the Avengers killed except for himself. And after he did it, all of a sudden these mind-controlling berets floated down from the sky like like rain, <laughs> and they landed on all of the dead Avengers heads and like reanimated them like zombies, and then one landed on Mindpool's head and made him, like basically mind controlled him and turned all the heroes bad into like bad beret controlled zombies. They ended up having to strap him to a rocket and, and shoot him back at the planet that all the beret creatures came from, <laughs> like blow up the planet. Weird, really weird stuff. So I want to see how they would do him in this form. Uh, and then, of course, X-Force. We've been pulling a lot of X-Force. Uh, Roberto da Costa, Sunspot, one of my all-time favorite characters as well. Definitely my all-time favorite new mutant. By, like, head and shoulders above all the other ones. I love his storyline, so I'd love to pull him and be able to talk about him. What else do I think is going to be in this set? Who knows, man. Deadpool has touched every corner of the Marvel Universe. Deadpool has killed every corner of the Marvel Universe. Literally, Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe is, is a book. And Wolverine's done the exact same thing. I mean, Deadpool has stolen the Infinity Gauntlet from Thanos. Deadpool has roasted the Marvel Universe. Uh, Brian Posehn wrote this wonderful uh, uh, series that had Deadpool in it. And, and that being said, like almost so many writers have written Deadpool and Wolverine as well. Daniel Way, Jerry Duggan, you go back, Nicieza, I mean, Joe Kelly's run. I mean, there's so much stuff. And Deadpool has changed over time. So I'm hoping to pull a bunch of Deadpools in these final three days. 
and I want to see the full gambit of, of, of what Deadpool is because the original Deadpool when he showed up was calculated, he was smart, he was deadly, he was hilarious still, but he knew what he was doing. And even though he would fail sometimes, his plans were always solid. He would fail when it was something he didn't know about. In some hands, he becomes a buffoon who's just completely screwing up all the time over and over again. And in some hands, he is just the fourth wall breaking. I know I'm a comic book character, so who cares? I'm just going to shrink the rhino into a keychain size and have him you know, run around the house with my keys. It's a fun little where's my keys game. It's like he's done some crazy, crazy stuff. But for there to be so many different versions of Deadpool over the years and not to have pulled one yet... I'm getting a little wigged out, actually. So uh, what else am I hoping for? I don't know. I'm just, I'm having so much fun. For a fan of the old school X-Men, um, this has been such a cool ride of nostalgia. And I know I've been talking a lot. Uh, like I said, I'm the unboxer with the mouth. Like, uh, like Deadpool is the Merc with the mouth. I can't stop myself. So without further ado, let's get into this. Pre-release. Uh, uh, is going to be available for you all on June the 12th, full set on June the 26th. And if you want to get your hands on it super early, show up in Huntsville, Alabama to our Hero Clicks for Huntington's uh, event weekend for charity and join us because we'll be doing a super duper extreme pre-release the first weekend of May. Go to HeroClicksForHuntingtons.com to take part in the event, our auction, our tournaments, anything. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, this is kind of a Wolverine-centric pack here. Um, oh, and if anybody's wondering, yes, they will have retail chase boosters for this set. So if there's some chases that you just aren't finding, you have almost the rest of the set. It's a way you can purchase these things to, to get a good shot at chases that you may still be actually chasing. Womp womp. Um, anyway, <laughs> let's, let's see. We've got Wolverine here. Oh, and I know this costume. Oh, I know this pose. <gasps> yes. Oh, that's so cool. I'll wait to talk about it until you get the close-up view of it on the turntable over here in a second. We got this Wolverine yesterday. If you didn't watch days one and two, please go back and take a peek. And uh, then we have his nemesis, Sabretooth. Then we have his young clone and the new Wolverine, uh, as uh, she goes by Wolverine now, X-23. And uh, we have... We pulled Sh uh, Shatterstar yesterday and talked a little bit about the history of Mojo World. We have Longshot today, um, which is really cool because Longshot, as well as being a longstanding member of the X-Men, as well as having a long storied history with Dazzler, who people love. I'd love to see Dazzler in this set. As uh, he's also a member of the Exiles for a good amount of time. A younger version, a, a less embattled version of Longshot is a member of the Exiles for a while. So it ties into that Exiles sub theme as well. I mean, we've gotten Hot Shots, we've got Exiles, we've got X-Force, we've got, oh man, so much X-goodness, I love it. Uh, yes, can you tell that the, the mutants are my favorite thing in Marvel? Uh, they clearly are. Uh, we've got this uh, tip card before. Helps you find your local stores. If you're not really uh, familiar with who might be playing Heroclix in your area, you can go and find a play group. It's really, really cool. I'm glad that WizKid is doing that because we want to grow this thing, right? My son is eight. My daughter's six. They have their own Heroclix. They don't quite play yet, but I want to play with them for years and years and years to come. And uh, I can't do that unless we keep, you know, keep the game alive. And uh, I, I'm so stoked that they're showing you new ways to find play groups. Okay. Man, we have a lot of heroes in this. Not a lot of villains in this set. So far, I mean, I, I'm actually shocked we haven't seen so many different villains. I mean, just off the top, we've got Sabretooth here. Where's Lady Deathstrike? Um, the, the thing is with Deadpool, though, is he doesn't really have, I mean, where's Ajax, right? Uh, where's T-Ray, right? Where's, where's uh, uh, Slayback? Where, where's all these characters that are like hyper dangerous but kind of interchangeable? Um, but the thing about Deadpool is he breaks all of the norms of superheroes, right? I mean, he's on record saying, I don't have an arch nemesis. Most comic book characters, sure, they have an arch nemesis. I just have people that I kill and I move on from. Like, I don't, I don't have arch nemesis. So maybe that's why we don't have a, a lot of villains pulled in this set so far. But hopefully we pull uh, some more here soon. I mean, I'm, I'm sure, you know, with, with all these elements, X-Force, maybe Strife, you know, maybe some of those big bads from back then, Magneto. Um, but I don't really know who else we'd be seeing. Sauron? Uh, Savage Land, you know, he, he killed Cannonball at one point, who was a member of Export. So, like, maybe some of these guys will come along at some point. Anyway, 
We did pull one villain today. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at him first, actually, since we're starved for villains. This is Sabretooth. All right, this costume is very reminiscent of Mutant Massacre, of, you know, Mr. Sinister's Marauders back in the day, Fall of the Mutants kind of stuff. Um, you know, after all of that had happened, Sabretooth stayed in the tunnels and was killing Morlocks over and over again, just continuing to hunt them. Uh, he's just a real bad dude, man. Sabretooth, Brotherhood of Mutants, Exiles, Marauders, Weapon X, Animal, Brute. I have a healing factor too. At the beginning of your turn, heal Sabretooth one click. Stay down. Make an attack, but only to target an opposing character that has healed since your last turn is a trait. So you get a free extra attack. Oh, that is, that's nasty. Track you down, charge, flurry, and leap, climb. On the back here, Victor Creed. It says Exiles number 82. So that's interesting as well that that's not the saber tooth that I kind of remember from Exiles, but... Here's the thing, the Time Breakers, who we pulled the other day, they had multiple teams of Exiles out in the world. They had, uh, they had a Weapon X Exiles, which was like more like a, a wet work style Exiles team. Whereas Blink and her crew, you know, Sunfire, Sasquatch, all those, Mimic, Morph, uh, they did things that weren't as deadly, that weren't as dirty, that weren't as awful, uh, you know. The Weapon X Exiles, which Sabretooth was the lead of for a while, um, they did the wet work, you know? They did, they, they killed some people. They did some things. They saw some things. Um, but he didn't quite look like this. Uh, but that Sabretooth is awesome. Listen, Blink was saved in the Age of Apocalypse by Sabretooth. And, uh, you know, they never come right out and say, but it feels like that Sabretooth is the same one that is reunited with Blink in the Pages of Exiles. Such a cool, like, father-daughter, older brother, younger sister kind of thing. Um, they're family, the two of them, and it's really, really cool to see. Um, but this Sabretooth, like I said, the way he looks, and I'll put him back up here so you can see, this feels like his older costume, right? This feels like old Marauder's Sabretooth. And we pulled Richter the other day, and I think I talked about how Richter, when he quit and left the X-Force, he had to kind of sneak out, he had to run away. And so he went through the Morlock tunnels that were connected to uh, the X, X Mansion's estate. And when he went into the tunnels, he was sought out by Sabretooth. And Sabretooth was about to kill him. And then Caliban shows up. Caliban would be awesome in this set. Caliban had just become uh, more than he used to be. He had just become the horseman of death meant to challenge people on Earth to see if they were uh, able to survive. And uh, he started showing up a lot in the X-Men books. And he battled Sabretooth basically to the death and, uh, and pretty much killed him. Uh, Richter buried them both under a ton of rubble before he left. But this is what that Sabretooth reminds me of. Just that vicious awful, evil, for no good reason, uh, Victor Creed from back in the day. The one that got stuck, put in the pit when they did the new Jonathan Hickman run of X-Men. He, they had a rule, no mutant may kill a human again, and they couldn't trust Sabretooth not to do it, so they buried him underground, like that version of, of Sabretooth, which actually, oh, Oh my gosh, he has his own book called Exiles now, which takes place in the Krokoan age of, uh, of X-Men, where he's actually uh, hunting down Orcus agents who have been experimenting on uh, mutants like him, who are cast off, who are exiled from Krakoa. That's a really good, cool book, too. Uh, Nanny, Orphan Maker, uh, a bunch of different really cool characters that I, that I love. Um, uh, Jefferson uh, Pierce is, I mean, not Jefferson Pierce, uh, Jefferson, I'll, come, I'll, I'll think of his name. He's a technomancer. He can become any like form. He's their spaceship, basically. Oh, so, so cool. Uh, definitely read that one. I think there's five or six issues, and it's, it's a current book. You can go pick it up at the comic shop right now. Anyway, moving on. Uh, Wolverine the Younger. This is Laura Kinney. Everybody knows her as X-23. She's got two claws in her hand. She might have one in her foot. Uh, Weapon X, X-Force, X-Men, Assassin, Martial Artist. Family bonding is a shared trait. Laura. When X-23 KOs an opposing character of 30 points or less, after resolutions, a friendly character with a family bonding trait may make an attack. Faster than Logan. 
super senses. At the beginning of your turn, you may heal X23 one click. She's eight clicks long, 12 attack on the top of her dial, exploit weakness and blades. She's not missing. And I love the family bonding trait. On the back, you see X-Men. It says Uncanny X-Men number 451 is her significant appearance. I wish I could tell you what uh, happened in that issue early 2000s. I think that's when after she's introduced in her kind of standalone book, when she starts to then show up in the actual world of X-Men. That seems to be like when it was. I was in Japan when all of that was coming out. Her initial solo book, you didn't quite know what was going on in that. It was in a different kind of Marvel imprint. It was a really interesting story all in itself. The art was beautiful. And then she kind of crashed into the world of the X-Men. Um, very, very cool. The family bonding trait, though, makes me think we're going to be getting more members of this Wolverine family, right? So Wolverine himself, Laura, uh, Honey Badger, for sure, Scout. Um, are we going to get Doc in? Maybe. Uh, Wolverine's son. I don't know who else uh, could be in that line, but family bonding as a shared trait might give us some clues to who else we're going to see. Okay, long shot. Man, one of my all-time favorite moments, and I love this sculpt. I'm, I'm going to put him on there right now. One of my all-time favorite moments is from the uh, X-Men crossover event Inferno. Uh, dealt with the Goblin Queen, with Madeline Pryor, with Mr. Sinister, and all of his uh, machinations behind the scenes, the Marauders, we had just talked about Sabretooth, um, Harpoon, all of them um, comes to a head in the middle of New York City. And the final issue, Longshot is the only X-Man standing and he takes his shot. And I won't tell you what happens after that, but I read it in the original book and then in X-Men Classic so many times. Uh, and this pose shows me exactly what happened in that scene. Uh, Adams was the artist. Beautiful stuff. I love this sculpt. Exiles, Mojoverse, X-Men, and Celebrity. Keywords. Oh, he's a super rare. Oh, I didn't even know. We pulled a super rare, folks. Uh, what can I say? It always works out. When Longshot makes an attack, if his attack is modified by plus three, increase damage dealt by one. When Longshot is attacked, if his defense is modified by plus three, modify the attacker's damage minus one. On the back, whoa. Whoa. Um, did I miss something? Was there not, was there supposed to be a die in the, oh no. Um, checking. So it looks like, huh. Longshot has one of those special dice, but it did not come in the booster with him, but it says you just have to be born lucky. Perplex. When Longshot uses it, he may instead roll the luck die and modify the chosen combat value by the result. That's where I need to be as a special movement power, sidestep, and leap climb. Um, so as Perplex is, uh, you can roll a die where it 50% of the time is one, but can also be two plus two or even a plus three based on the die there, um, and I don't have I don't have the die. It didn't come in the booster with it, so I don't know if maybe you only have a chance of getting the special die when you get. But this is a super rare, so uh, I don't know. I'll be asking Wizkids uh, to give us some clarity on that, uh, maybe in the video in the comments below, um, <laughs> to let us know like what's up with that. But uh, we again got this product so 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 early that uh, you know months and months ahead. So maybe uh, the die is supposed to be in there. Maybe there's just a chance. I'm not sure. That being said, uh, Longshot is, is uh, such a fun character. His, he's super light because his bones are hollow. He's like a bird in that way. Like his bones are super hollow. So he's like super agile. He can leap super high. He's got this luck factor about him. Um, he was for a long time one of the gladiators in Mojo World, just like Shatterstar was. And the whole thought, like I said in the last video when we got Shatterstar, was that they're related somehow. They look way too similar to not be related. Well, Rob Liefeld just kind of like drew Shatterstar based on like the way, you know, with the star around his eye that, that he kind of looked. He brought Shatterstar in. He's like, maybe, maybe they are. Eventually, they fleshed it out. There's this resistance leader, this, he's not quite a god, but his name's Arise in Mojo World. And 
you know, Arise had been working against trying to get Mojo out of power for such a long time. And he sent Longshot through the multiverse to, to try to get heroes to come back and help him. And he found the X-Men. Shatterstar, when he came through, I said he just showed up out of nowhere. He was sent by Arise as well to find help. And Shatterstar actually did find help. He found X-Force instead of the X-Men. He teleported into the danger room looking for the X-Men, but X-Force happened to be living there at the time. So he found X-Force and eventually uh, they all went back. And that's when you found out the real true story about Shatterstar. He showed up out of nowhere one day in a Mojo world. He wasn't born there. He wasn't cloned there. It's very enigmatic. They don't know how he showed up, but kind of as like the Messiah, the savior of Mojo world. And from his DNA, a rise created long shot. So, like I said, these time travel kind of these these <laughs> I don't know. There's there's all these situations where you're like, wait, what came first, chicken or the egg? What came first, long shot or shadow star? Not quite sure. Uh, but from what I understand, when long shot and Dazzler finally retired and had a child, they named him Shadow Star, and it kept that loop kind of going. So you don't know is Shadow Star from the future, from the past? Is long shot a clone of Shadow Star? Is Shadow Star the son of long shot? What happened here? Um, anyway, definitely family, and they definitely saved Mojo World eventually. Um, we'll figure out what's going on with that die at some point. Last but not least, and it's rare for me to, to do this, but I'm going to put a comment on the stand last here, just because uh, this is such an iconic pose. Wolverine had a four-issue miniseries back in the early 80s um, that took him to Japan, and it dealt with his love Lady Mariko and Clan Yoshida, and he wanted to have her hand in marriage. He asked her to marry him, and she ran back home to Japan, and he followed her. And uh, I'm not going to spoil it. It's only four issues long, but this is one of the most iconic covers of a Wolverine comic of all time, with his finger, like, saying, like, come on, with his claws up in the air. You can see him right there, like, you know, he's got his one finger up, like, let's, let's go. Um, Wolverine, Weapon X, X-Force, X-Men, Martial Artist, Keywords, Set Number One, I'm the best there is at what I do, Blades, Claws, Fangs, when Wolverine uses it after resolutions, deal an opposing character adjacent to either Wolverine or the hit target, damage equal to half the result. Very cool. He's got an X-Men team ability there, he's got some charge, some stealth, some charge, some stealth, He's got some regen on the dial here. Definitely an early version of Wolverine on the back. You can see Wolverine number one, 1982, James Howlett. And uh, I tell you, it's a four-issue miniseries. It deals with Wolverine going to Japan, the love of his life, uh, Mariko, and uh, everything that goes uh, awry and uh, on that journey. And I'm not going to spoil it, but what a cool sculpt. What a cool uh, cover to take off of. Very, very... Uh, fun for me to see. All right, next one. Uh, second booster for today. All right, we got some Wolverine. And, uh, oh, yes, finally. Okay, now we get some Deadpool. And we have a die, we have a die in here. Um, so does Deadpool have a special die scenario? Let's see. Um, we said we've been looking for villains. Here we go. Lady Deathstrike in the house. So we got Sabretooth today. We got Lady Deathstrike. The villains are starting to fill out their ranks a little bit. Uh, we have a Deadpool. Oh, Ha! Deadpool robot. Little Deadpool life model decoy there. Um, we have multiple man. Okay. In a very interesting costume there in front of us. And then we have actually, what is this, an all Deadpool pack? We have, uh, we have the rare Deadpool. And then we have uh, another Deadpool as well, which is set number two, the, un, the, the common. Sorry, we have the common and the uncommon Deadpool here in the same pack. So um, Deadpool, Deadpool, Deadpool robot, Lady Deathstrike, and uh, multiple man in a very Deadpool uh, <laughs> colored uniform. So I don't know. Maybe they just wanted the black and red motif. There we go. Okay, we said we haven't seen Deadpool yet. Here we go. We've got a couple of them. Uh, I'll probably be tempted to put one of them onto the... The left side here. Um, I didn't show you the die yet. It doesn't seem to have any special demarcation. I'll put it on the spinner so you guys can take a look at it, though. That is the logo that you'll see on the bases for all that uh, figures in this set. So that's this set logo. You saw a yellow and blue version on the die with Wolverine. So uh, here's one 
for Deadpool. Very, very cool. I like that a lot. Um, let's take a look actually first at Lady Deathstrike. Lady Deathstrike is set number 41. She has Reavers, Thunderbolts, Weapon X, Assassin, Martial Artist, Robot. The target trait. At the beginning of the game for all friendly characters with this trait, give a target token to an opposing character. For all characters with this trait, when a friendly character with the assassin keyword KOs an opposing character with the target token, score 25 victory points. This is cool. This plays nice with assassins that we have had in sets past as well. Um, so we have uh, many, many figures out there that can actually take... Uh, part in this shared trait of the target. On the back, you've got downloading the digital consciousness. Combat reflexes. When Lady Deathstrike is KO'd, choose a friendly character with the robot keyword. This game, that character gains the assassin keyword and can use the traits on this card. Protected, pulse wave. Stand on your graves, special movement power, charge, but don't have speed if an opposing character was KO'd this turn. Oh, man. Extreme X-Men is the significant appearance. And as you can tell, she's no longer just the old Lady Deathstrike that we met in Wolverine's Weapon X days. Uh, cybernetic implants, uh, computer interfaces. Um, she's a tiny, killing computer machine. Um, yeah, this is really interesting. I mean, anybody that's a part of the Reavers, you know, uh, a part of that Cameron Hodge kind of situation. A lot of them, uh, you know, have computer or mechanical adjustments to them to make them even more deadly at killing mutants. Um, yeah, the assassin part of this is really cool. So the target you can go back and play, and that's really, really cool. And the fact that she can grant the assassin keyword to others is cool as well. And if you're KOing on that turn, I mean, she gets to go... Her full movement, which is only sevens and sixes, but on the new maps, actually covers a lot of ground. No improved movement or anything, but there you go. Lady Deathstrike, uh, Brotherhood team ability. She goes on the left here. All right, let's go with Madrox next, and then we'll dive into all of these Deadpools. Now, this Madrox's costume uh, is from a time that is not one of my favorite runs of uh, Multiple Man, actually. I believe that this, uh, here, I'll talk about it in a second. Let's talk about his card first as I uh, try and figure out what I'm looking at here. Uh, Hydra, X-Core, X-Factor, X-Men, Detective, Police, and Spy keywords. That's covering a lot of ground for Jamie Madrox. Uh, that's not all stuff that happened in this costume here. Set number 13, do the math, free. If multiple man began your turn on the map, roll a d6. On a four to six, generate a multiple man from your KO area. And that's Deadpool Wolverine set number 13. So this identical version of Madrox. He's only 10 points. You spawn him in the area. He's got sidestep, only four, uh, five movement. And uh, they do have some masterminds so they can pass off damage to each other or to anybody, <laughs> I guess, 10 points or less or shares a keyword. So uh, sidestep, mastermind, and power look on the back. Uncanny X-Men. Number 401. So if I'm right, um, this might have been during the Casey run uh, or the Carry run or uh, Chuck Austin. It's not quite Chuck Austin, not yet. But what this costume, I believe, is from this black and this red costume here is um, Banshee took over X Corps or usurped uh, Hellfire Club and. and created something called x -Core. He thought they needed a wing um, to protect the mutant race where they could be financially viable and also a bit of a police force, have some money and some power behind them, and somehow got Jamie Madrox to be like the grunt for the whole entire operation. And it was to the point that like it just flew in the face of everything Madrox had gone through in the Peter David run of X-Factor. Um, he was just this attitudeless, kind of like blank slate, kind of, you know, thousands of Madroxes and these buildings just running 
you know, numbers and statistics and doing grunt work and all this stuff. Like, I don't know, not my favorite version of Majrox. It was such a sharp right turn. And then eventually gave way to Majrox being full of personality again in the uh, X Factor investigation. So not my favorite Majrox. And actually, there was a lot of shifty stuff that happened. So I'm going to throw him on the villain side too. All right, let's start with Deadpool. Uh, let's do the robot first. Here's the Deadpool robot. You can see the metallic pieces of him. Definitely a little metallic sheen to this guy. Um, if you look at his card, there's no special abilities. You have Charge, Stealth, Running Shot, Blades, Claws, and Fangs, Steel Energy, Precision Strike, Toughness, Regeneration, and Combat Reflexes. However, there is a figure in this set that is granting bonuses to people that don't have any special powers on their dial, and that is Iceman. So Iceman will be giving this guy some bonuses to his attack values and, and such. Very, very cool. I believe that this guy, yep, Spider-Man, Deadpool. Uh, these are life model decoys for Deadpool in the Spider-Man Deadpool run. Uh, Spider-Man Deadpool 29 and 2018. I like the Spider-Man uh, Deadpool run, kind of. Um, it's 50 issues long. If you love those two characters, for sure go and check it out. Um, I'm just going to put them on the bad guy side just because it's looking so empty over here. Uh, but, you know, it's just, it's a lot of quippiness. Um, to the point that, like, Spider-Man can't even, like, he can't even handle the quips anymore. And everybody's usually asking Webhead to shut up, and he's just like, Deadpool, will you shut up? <laughs> so it's a lot of quips. It's, it's the most thwippy, quippy uh, comic book you could ever possibly read. And, uh, you know, if that's what you're in the business for, then, yeah, go check it out. 50 issues. Very fast read, though. It's not, like, too intense, not too deep, not too full of, you know, text walls and stuff. Hmm. Baja Blast punch. All right, let's go uh, with Deadpool set number two. This looks more like, uh, like our modern day Deadpool here. Um, I'm sorry, the, the throwback, the other one that I'm looking at looks like more like the modern day outfit. This looks like the throwback Deadpool. We got Deadpool Core, Weapon X, X-Men, Assassin, Soldier, and Spy, Unkillable Mercenary. At the beginning of your turn, you may roll a d6 and place it on this card. Oh, that's why we got the die then. Replacing any other die on this card. Regeneration. When Deadpool uses it, if there is a d6 on this card, he may use that d6 as the result instead of rolling. Okay, so at the beginning of your turn, you roll the d6. So if I roll, I roll a 6. Ooh, I just rolled a 6. You didn't see it. Didn't happen. Uh, you place it on the card, and then... When you use regeneration, you can use the six instead of actually rolling, and then you remove it from the card. Very cool. So we did get the die with him. We didn't get the die with Longshot, but we did get the die with Wade. So maybe they are uh, just a chance to get them. On the back, you see Team Player, New Mutants number 98. That is his first appearance. Uh, it is great. Uh, it has a lot of him breaking his jaw repeatedly. He gets mad at so, so many people always hit him in the jaw early on. It is a running joke uh, with Deadpool. He's like, in the jaw again? I just, it was just broken. Please leave me alone. Definitely go in the bad guys. That was a bad guy, Deadpool. And uh, the fact that you get to roll that die just for free at the beginning of the turn and use it as a substitute is great. And I did legitimately roll a six. <laughs> uh, Deadpool number 31. This looks more like a modern day, a little souped up. Uh, costume here. He's got plenty of costume changes over time. Deadpool Core, Great Lakes Avengers, six pack. Yes, six pack keyword. Are we going to get Grizzly? Are we going to get Bridge? We've already got Domino. We're going to get Cable. You want to get Manga? Let's get Manga. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. He says that line actually to White Fox, who we pulled on day one. Blades, Claws, Fangs. When Deadpool uses it after resolutions, heal him equal to the D6 result. So whenever he slices somebody up, he gets some health back. On the back, you have team player. And yes, Hot Shots number two. This is more of a modern day Hot Shots version of Deadpool when he means to do well, but he is not wanted on the team of six women. Uh, they do not want Deadpool around. They just think he's going to muck everything up. And he kind of does early on and then redeems himself later, much like a normal Deadpool story does go. Uh, you want to get manga? Let's get manga. He does say to White Fox. I, I remember, I, I read that recently, um, that run. And uh, it was Gail Simone, who's who did a great job on the first couple of uh, 
domino mini series. Uh, this one is a little less domino centric, and uh, so you know, read uh, accordingly uh, if you. Uh, like stories that have lead characters who, who do a little less uh, than, than you would expect. But that's it for day number three. Like I said, June 12th for the pre-release, June 26th for the full set release. Support your local gaming stores and comic shops. Please, please, please. I go to three different stores in this area, and uh, I try to support them as much as possible. They give us a place to get together as our communities, and uh, they are the lifeblood of this game and our industry, and uh, I just can't say thank you to them enough, so make sure you're going and picking up your product there. Speaking of an awesome brick and mortar store, Lucky Dice Cafe in Huntsville, Alabama, is hosting the super duper Deadpool Wolverine pre, pre, pre-release the first weekend of May. Like I said, go to heroclicksforhuntingtons.com to see all of the things we have going on for our event weekend, including the Scott Porter vs. the World tournament where we will be playing on Saturday, on the first Saturday in May, with all of this set in a sealed setting. It's going to be so much fun. We have a live auction uh, that happens online that anybody around the world can bid on. We have online battle royals, in-person battle royals. There is a team tournament that happens on that Friday. Um, there is so much going on. and. So much of that money goes to the here the Huntington's desire the Huntington's Disease Society of America and their battle against Huntington's disease. And actually, the HDSA is going to be there this year. So if anybody's interested in meeting somebody with HDSA, they're going to be down there uh, and they're going to be telling us where all the money that we have raised as a community has gone so far and what we've been able to do to improve people's lives who are battling Huntington's disease. So I'm super excited about that. Ryan from WizKids will also be there. So we're going to have some really cool guests. We're going to have some awesome events. And I just hope that you guys can make it down. Uh, this Saturday, April 13th, we're actually going to have our live stream from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific. Uh, that would be 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, me and V Muse, who has done the live stream uh, preview for our event the last couple of years, we're going to be doing it again and showing you plenty of stuff that we have coming up. A lot of the prizing. There's a bunch of Scott Porters up for grabs at our event. And uh, I, when I say Scott Porters, not like multiples of me, but like the little guys that you can play with on the map, both the Hero Clicks for Huntington's version and the Power Bomb version, as well as Venom God of Symbiotes and uh, upcoming unreleased uh, sets. Uh, we have factory sets for sets that are happening way later this year, and uh, we're just super excited to share that with the community. So thank you to WizKids for sending me this today and allowing me to share this with you. Thank you to WizKids for supporting HeroClix for Huntington's, and uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and I am so excited to finish out this over the next two days with you. Um, thank you so much to Hyper RPG for hosting us once again, giving us a beautiful place to unbox all of this uh, Christmas morning, Hero Clicks goodness. I will see you guys tomorrow and may all your roles be critical hits. See you guys. Peace.